What's up guys, I'm Paul and welcome to the Ecommerce Gold YouTube channel. Now in this video, we're gonna be looking at WooCommerce, which is one of the most popular options for building e-commerce websites. And it's the most popular e-commerce plugin for the WordPress CMS. But is it any good? Well, that's what we're gonna be looking at in this video by looking at the pricing, what kind of features you get with WooCommerce and also a quick overview of what the plugin and platform in general is like to use. So let's get started. Right now, before we get into the review, I do just want to confirm that we are looking at WooCommerce for self-hosted WordPress sites. We're not looking at WooCommerce for hosted WordPress.com sites. Just wanted to clear that one up. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is the pricing. Now, WordPress and WooCommerce are completely free to install and use, but they're not really free to run because you need hosting. It's the foundation of your store. Now, when you're just getting started, you're probably going to be okay with normal shared hosting because you're probably not going to be having that much traffic and you're probably not going to be having that much in terms of sales. So you probably are going to be okay with shared hosting. But as your store starts to grow, you're going to want to improve the hosting that your site is run on. And you want to go for e-commerce grade hosting and you need this to be PCR compliant because this is secure hosting and you want your e-commerce store to be running on secure hosting. But unfortunately, when it comes to the cost of this, PCR compliant hosting isn't cheap. From the research I've done, it generally starts from around about $20 to $30 a month, but can run into hundreds of dollars a month, depending on your requirements for traffic and also storage as well. So this is something you do want to consider when it comes to WooCommerce. Because even though people always say, oh, well, WooCommerce is free, you need to think about the cost associated with running a WooCommerce store, which is hosting. And in some cases, the cost of hosting can actually be more expensive than going with other hosted platforms such as Shopify. So even though WooCommerce itself is free to use, it can end up becoming quite expensive to use with things like hosting and also other things as well, which I'm gonna cover next. So the next thing is features. And as standard, as you can see on screen, this is my full written review of WooCommerce, which you can check out by clicking the link in the description, because this covers all the things I'm talking about in this video and a few other things as well. But when it comes to features, as you can see on screen, WooCommerce is very, very basic as standard. You really don't get much because you can sell physical and digital products, you can create discount coupons, and that's basically it when it comes to tools because WooCommerce as standard adds a very basic shopping cart to your WordPress website. It's very, very basic. And in reality, as standard, it's only really good for digital products. And I'm gonna explain why. Because for physical products, you're gonna need some kind of way of printing orders off, either directly through your WooCommerce dashboard or by exporting the orders and putting it into other software. You can't do this as standard with WooCommerce. You need to install additional plugins to add this functionality. So it's not really good for physical products out of the box. It's workable for digital products, but other than this, you don't get much in terms of features. And Payment Gateways is a great example of this because the only payment gateway you get as standard is PayPal standard. If you want any other payment gateway, you're gonna have to install a plugin to do this. So if you want WooCommerce Payments, which is a relatively recent addition, you're gonna have to install the plugin. Now this is reasonably good. It's still not rated that highly by people who have used it, but WooCommerce Payments is based on Stripe, so it has got good underpinnings. I'm just not sure how good the execution of the actual plugin is. And this seems to be a recurring theme with WooCommerce Payment Gateways. PayPal Express isn't highly rated. Amazon Pay isn't that highly rated either. They don't seem to have very good execution when it comes to their Payment Gateway plugins, which isn't great. Now, the ones I've mentioned are free but there are paid options as well for more traditional payment gateways, things like WorldPay, for example. And these cost from $79 a year. And once again, the reviews are a bit hit and miss on this, which isn't great when you're paying $79 a year for a plugin. Now talking about plugins, let's talk about the WordPress plugin library, because you're probably gonna need to go here because as I say, WooCommerce isn't great for features as standard. Now the WordPress plugin library is all free. Every plugin in there is free. And if you actually do a search term for WooCommerce, there's over 1000 results come up. So there's a lot of plugins that add some kind of feature or functionality to WooCommerce. And let's say these are free to use and you are gonna need some of these in order to add pretty basic functionality to your WooCommerce store. But what about outside of the WordPress plugin library? Because Let's say a lot of these are free, 
but they also have premium paid options as well, which means the free plugins are usually somewhat limited on terms of the features you get. So you might not get access to all the features you need, and this is where you're gonna to have to pay for the premium options. And these need to be bought directly from developers. You can't buy them directly through the WordPress dashboard. And this is where WooCommerce can start to become expensive because when you factor in your hosting, also if you need premium plugins as well, it can make WooCommerce really expensive. And this is where the free kind of introductory thing, you get the plugin for free, starts to kind of unravel a bit because it can actually become quite expensive. And the upfront costs for actually setting up a WooCommerce store can be quite high. So next up, let's talk about theme selection and customization because you want your store to look good. It's part of creating an e-commerce website. You want it to be aesthetically pleasing. Now, when it comes to theme selection, there's a huge selection of themes to choose from, even free themes. If you actually search through the themes that are available directly through your WordPress dashboard, which are all free themes, if you actually put in the keyword WooCommerce, once again, there's over a thousand different themes come up. But when you actually move outside of the, basically the WordPress dashboard, there's a massive amount. There's thousands of themes to choose from. Now, most of these are paid options, but there's a huge amount to choose from, from places like Theme Forest, which is a theme marketplace. Also, you can buy lots directly from developers. So there's a massive selection of themes to choose from, and you should be able to find something that fits your business. But what's it like when it comes to customization? Well, let's go and have a look. So if we jump into our WordPress dashboard and we go to appearance and click on customize, it'll take us to our theme customizer. Now the amount of options here does depend on the theme that you're using. And this is an important thing to think about because certain themes like Neve, which is available from theme oil does have quite a few different options available for its theme, but other themes don't have anywhere near the amount of options available. And you can actually install some themes and in the theme customizer, there's only a couple of options available. So when it comes to theme customization, it does depend on the theme that you're using. And also if you're using free themes, you need to understand that they're gonna have limited features because many of these free themes are kind of samples for the premium themes that the theme developer offers. So if you want access to all the features that the theme offers, you're probably gonna have to go for the paid option which once again can make WooCommerce quite an expensive option because a lot of the themes and also the plugins as well, you need to pay annually for them as well if you want access to things like support and updates, etc. So it can make WooCommerce quite expensive if you haven't already got that point. So those are the theme options, but there is also the option to build custom pages in WordPress. So if we come out of the theme customizer and we create a new page, I'll show you what I mean by this. Because it's based on the new Gutenberg, well, not so new Gutenberg page builder. And what you can do is you can add blocks. You can create custom pages for your homepage and also things like your About Us page, etc. And what you can do is just click on this plus icon here and you can search for blocks. And if we browse all, there is a selection of WooCommerce blocks that you can choose from as well. Just need to find them. There you go, WooCommerce. So as you can see, there's some options when it comes to WooCommerce blocks, which means you can integrate WooCommerce with different pages on your site, which is really good. So you can build custom pages. You can also integrate these blocks with your blog posts as well. So you can create direct links to your products in your blog posts, which should, if you've got a good SEO strategy around blogging, lead to more sales, which is always a good thing. So theme customization, isn't bad within WooCommerce. You can create pretty good looking pages depending on the blocks you use. There's also specific block plugins you can install as well that add different types of blocks, different design elements, etc. So you can make really good looking pages on your WooCommerce store. And as I've already said, it does depend on the theme you're using as the amount of theme options you actually get. Now, one thing I do just want to quickly talk about before we get onto what WooCommerce is like to use is I want to talk about support. Because with WooCommerce, you don't get any direct support from the developers. WooCommerce don't provide any support at all. Now, if you buy one of their premium plugins, they will offer support around that plugin, but not WooCommerce in general. And this is a recurring theme when it comes to support with WooCommerce. You can get support around specific things on your site. So you can get support on your hosting from your web host. If you buy premium themes or plugins, you can get support for those themes or plugins directly from the developers. But Generally, you don't get any overall support, so with your store in general. And one thing I will say is they generally like to pass the book because 
they all like to blame each other. So if you've got a plugin developer and your plugin's not working properly, they may blame your hosting or your theme or another plugin. And it's the same with theme developers, hosting. They all like to blame other people rather than just trying to sort out the problem and seeing if it's actually their thing that's causing that problem. They just like to blame everybody else. Now, if you do want overall support for your WooCommerce store, you're gonna have to pay for a developer and have them involved in the process of building your store so they understand how it works. And then should you run into any issues, you can contact them and they should be able to sort it out. But you're probably gonna have to pay for this on a monthly basis, which once again is another cost. Now outside of this, because WooCommerce is so popular, there is a pretty good online community around it. So there's lots of forums, there's also a place like Reddit where you can go and ask questions. There's also lots of blogs with tutorials and things like that. And also YouTube as well. Lots of people do YouTube tutorials on WordPress and WooCommerce. So should you be running into any issues with WooCommerce, a quick Google search could provide the answer. Now I'm not guaranteeing it will because there's certain questions that people have asked that people haven't been able to provide an answer for, but for I would say 95% of queries, there's probably something on the internet somewhere where somebody has answered that question. All right, so now we're gonna do a quick overview of what WooCommerce is like to use because I'm sure that's probably what you wanna know. So if we go back into our WordPress dashboard, and first off, we're gonna talk about getting started with WooCommerce. Now, if you've already got a WordPress site, this is pretty easy. It's simply a case of installing the plugin, following the setup guide, and you're good to go. But if you're building a store from scratch, it's a more involved process. It's not a case of simply signing up because you need to go and buy your hosting. You then need to point your domain name towards the web host. You then need to install an SSL certificate on your hosting to make sure you're running on a secure HTTPS protocol. You then need to install WordPress and make sure it's installed properly. And then finally, you install the WooCommerce plugin. Now, it depends on the web host you're going with as to how much involvement they have in the process. Some hosts are really good, and as soon as you point the domain name over, they'll actually go through and install WordPress for you. But other hosts will leave you completely on your own and you need to sort it all out. So it does depend on the host you're using as to how much assistance you get in the setup process. So it depends the stage you're at as to how easy or how difficult it is to actually get started with WooCommerce. But once you've installed the plugin, what's it like to actually get started with it? So if we go into WooCommerce and go into orders, I'll take you into the setup wizard. So if we go into help and click on the setup wizard, setup wizard. Now this comes up automatically as soon as you install the WooCommerce plugin. And as you can see, I've already been through this. So this wizard is pretty basic in terms of the setup steps because you enter your basic store details, which as you can see, I've already done that here. You then choose the industry that you're in, then the product types, whether it's a physical product, a digital product, and then it will offer you some other options with additional plugins that you can buy from WooCommerce, things like subscriptions, etc. Then you set up your basic business details and then choose the theme you're gonna be using for your store. It's a very basic setup guide and it's actually more basic than what it used to be. This is because they've changed the second part of it. So if we come out of the setup guide, we'll skip that one. Then if you go into your home, now one thing I have noticed is with the WooCommerce dashboard, it is quite delayed in terms of loading. I find this on the home page and also if you go into the analytics as well, there is this delay when it loads things. But once you've completed the setup guide and you go into your WooCommerce homepage, you'll have your inbox. Now, I haven't got all the options here because I've already been through and set up some things, but you'll have prompts to set up your payment gateways, create your first product, set up shipping, and other general things that you need to do in order to get your WooCommerce store up and running. So there are these prompts to do this, and it'll basically take you through the different steps you need to do. So it's not bad, but it's not the best setup guide in the world either. It's a bit kind of... Uh, I'd like to see it all in one rather than split across two different things because other setup guides are better than you get from WooCommerce. But what's the dashboard like itself to use? Well, as I've already said, there is some delays when you move between certain sections and WooCommerce never used to be like this. It used to be quite snappy in the back end of your site, but since they've added things like analytics and this homepage, there is some delays when you go on certain pages. But overall, it's pretty easy to use because when you install the WooCommerce plugin, it will add the WooCommerce option to your sidebar in your main WordPress navigation menu, add the products, analytics, and marketing. Now, if you install the WooCommerce payments gateway plugin as well, you'll have a payments option here as well. 
So overall, the dashboard is pretty easy to use because it's basically built off WordPress and the WordPress one is pretty good. It's pretty simple. Next up, let's talk about inventory management. So we're going to talk about adding a new product, organizing your inventory and then managing your inventory. So for this, we're going to go into products and we're going to add a new product. Now the add new product page is based off the classic editor in WordPress. It's not based off the new Gutenberg editor. And that's why it feels a little bit dated, especially when you compare this to things like Shopify or BigCommerce. They feel quite modern in their interface. WordPress and WooCommerce is starting to feel a little bit dated. But overall, the page is pretty easy to use. You've got all the options available to you. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of with WooCommerce is you have two product descriptions. You have your main product description, which sits below your product image. And at the bottom, you have a short description, which sits next to your product image. It's one of the only platforms that does this. But when it comes to basically setting up your product, it's going to be this section here, which you're going to work through because this is all the things related to your product. So you've got your general information, inventory, shipping, etc etc and then you choose your product categories and set up tags and different options are available in the sidebar so overall a very easy to use page it just feels a little bit dated as i've said but it works it's definitely function over form when it comes to the woocommerce create a new product page so what about when it comes to organizing your products well if we go into categories what you can do is create categories within WooCommerce because it's built off WordPress categories for its blog posts. And it works really well because you can create parent and subcategories and you can also have subcategories of subcategories. So you can make a really good product hierarchy for your products and make it really easy for customers to navigate around your store. So no issues when it comes to setting up your categories. You can also add descriptions as well to your categories, which improves their SEO. So it's actually pretty good when it comes to organizing your products. So what about when it comes to managing your inventory? You set all your products up, you're up and running. How easy is it to go in and manage your inventory? Well, it's actually pretty easy because there's two different options you can choose from. There's a main bulk editor. So if we select that, click on bulk actions and click on edit, you can choose to bulk edit products. So you can make changes to what categories they're in. You can change different options like prices, sales. So with this one, you can increase or decrease by a fixed amount. There's different options that are available here. So you have got a bulk editor, which is good for making quick changes. There's also a quick editor on each individual product as well. And this is really, really useful because if we click on quick edit, it brings up a lot of the options for that product. So we can change the title, we can change the uh, slug that goes on the URL. We can change the price. We can change different things on this product. So it is really, really good in that sense because you can go through and quickly make changes to your inventory. No issues when it comes to bulk editing at all. So finally, let's talk about order management because hopefully it's where you're going to spend a lot of time in your WooCommerce store. And unfortunately, it's not great as standard. So if we go into WooCommerce, click on orders, it'll take you through to the order management page. Now I've already kind of covered this in the fact of there's not much you can do as standard. If you're selling physical products, there's not a lot you can do. So if we select these products and we go on bulk actions, we can change the process status. That's all we can do. There's no other options available here. You are very limited as to what you can do. And if you even go into the orders, there's still not much in terms of what you can do because you can choose an action. Basically, you can send an email. There's not a lot you can do as standard. This is where you're going to need to install additional plugins. Now, there is a really good free one for being able to print order invoices and packing slips directly from your dashboard. That's free to use. And it comes up as the second option if you actually search for the WooCommerce plugin in the plugin library. And I definitely would recommend installing that if you're selling physical products. But if you're using third party order management software for shipping, whatever it is, you're going to need to install a plugin that allows you to export these orders. Now, these are free options, but there is paid options for both these plugins as well that offers additional functionality. So that is the order management as set as standard. It's really not very good and it is actually the worst order management as standard out of any other e-commerce platform that I've actually tested out, which really isn't a good thing. So WooCommerce, is it any good? It's okay. That's all I can really say about WooCommerce. And I have actually run a WooCommerce store. I ran a WooCommerce store for about two and a half years. And it can be a real headache because one, it can be a lot more expensive than what you actually expect it to be. Because everybody says, oh, it's free to build a WooCommerce store. 
It is, but if you actually want it to work in reality, you're gonna need to install plugins and you may need paid options for this as well, which can become quite expensive. Also, if you wanna use premium themes, you're gonna to have to pay for this as well. But one of the big issues when it comes to WooCommerce is the general headache of running it on a day-to-day -day basis. The reason is because it's self-hosted and you've got different plugins, they all update at different times and this can cause a lot of problems. Because when you update plugins, it can cause conflicts with other plugins and it can just cause your store to start working. I had this multiple times with my store that one day it'd be working fine, I'd install a plugin and all of a sudden everything would start working. And sometimes I wouldn't know that things would start working until a customer actually reached out to me and said, I can't complete the checkout or this isn't working. It's just not the most reliable option out there. And you also need a more technical knowledge as well because you need to understand how to use WordPress, you need to understand how to use WooCommerce and you basically need to learn how to be almost a WordPress developer slash designer in order to get the most out of this setup. And this is why I think when it comes to actually setting up a WooCommerce store, if you're doing this from scratch, you've never done it before, I actually think hosted options are the better ones. Things like Shopify or BigCommerce because one, they come with better features out of the box. They're also less of a headache to run on a day-to-day -day basis. And should things go wrong, you've got somebody you can contact and say, this isn't working. Why isn't it working? You don't have that with WooCommerce, you're kind of on your own. So while WooCommerce is okay, and if you've got an existing WordPress site, it's something that's worth considering, even though I do think there's better options such as Equid, for example, it is something worth considering if you've got an existing WordPress site and you wanna add a checkout to it. But if you're building a site from scratch and you've never built a site before, WooCommerce wouldn't be my recommended option. So that brings me to the end of the review. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, a like would be absolutely awesome because it helps the channel out with the almighty YouTube algorithm. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. Stay awesome, and I will see you in the next video.